Hello, this is Spidey1958, and welcome to my Pathfinder Kingmaker core classes, tips and options. This time we're going to do the Sorcerer. And next time we'll do the Wizards. Both of them got requested, but Sorcerer got requested first. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, the standard sorcerer, you basically get a bloodline ability, which we will pick later. Your sorcerer proficiencies, cantrips, and a bonus feat. Pretty much straightforward, nothing strange going on with a sorcerer. Then you have the imperial, I think it's imperial sorcerer, who deprives your insight rather than from insight rather than force of personality, which basically, I believe, means they get their spells from wisdom. But they get some extras. Besides the, instead of getting the, this counts as their bloodline. So then you have Bloodline of Kaina. Unlike most sorcerers whose innate magic is powered by force, you, you use willpower. So basically you're using wisdom. And you gain plus two bonus on religion checks. Which it says there. So basically at third level you get bless. You get resist energy at fifth. You get protection from energy at seventh, as well as getting a bloodline, a celestial bloodline feat, which is interesting because I don't know that there were feats. Oh, there it is. Dodge, meta magic extended, iron will, agile maneuvers, augment summoning, superior summoning. Class focus lore and weapon finesse. Then you get channel positive energy at ninth, so you're basically a sorcerer cleric, though at ninth level. So you do 3d6, so you're about this, you don't get it till ninth level, but you're close to the same as a cleric of the same level. And you also get Remove Curse as a spell. You get Flame Strike at 11th. Greater to Spell at 13th. And you get another Bloodline Feat. Banishment at 15. And you gain Spell Resistance against Evil Spells and Spells cast by Evil Creatures equal to 11 plus your Sorcerer level. Seventeenth, you get Sunburst. Ninth, if you get Munster Summon Nine. And at twenty, if you get Ascension, which makes you immune to acid, cold, and petrification. Resist electricity ten. Resist fire ten. And poor plus four racial bonus on saves against poison. The next is the Sylvan Sorcerer, who gets a um, animal Companion, I believe. So, let's see. Cantrips. Bonus. Yep, you get an Animal Companion. Doesn't say what level when you get it. You get uh, Nature Lore. Looks like you may get it right away. You get Woodland Stride. You get Entangle. You get hideous laughter, you get deep slumber, and again you get the bonus feats. I think this is a bloodline thing, that all bloodlines get bonus feats at 7, 13, and 19. And then they get their extra spells. Vine tap, dispel magic greater, change staff. Oh, you can turn a staff into a treant. 
Fey Magic, you get a plus two bonus on caster level checks made to overcome a creature's spell resistance. Summon Knee Red. Summon Harmadryad and Soul of Fey. Your soul becomes one with the world of the Fey. You gain immunity to poison and DR10 Cold Iron. Once per day, you can cast Cloak of Dreams as a spell like ability using your sorcerer level as your caster level. Next we have the Sage Sorcerer, who basically gets Sorcerer Proficiencies, the bonus feat, gets a thing that we don't know what it is, Cantrips, and Arcane Bolt, which is D4 plus 1 for every two Sorcerer levels. Then at third you get Magic Missile, You get Invisibility at 5th, you get Dispel Magic at 7th, you get Dimension Door at 9, you get the same normal bonus feats, but you also get New Arcana. Nymph level, you can add one spell from the Sorcerer Wizard list to your list of spells known. The spell must be of level that you are capable of casting. You can also add one additional spell at 13th and 17th. So you basically get to have an extra spell that normal Sorcerers would not have. Break Enchantment. True Seeing, Banishment, at 15th, pick one school of magic, does EC for any spells you cast from that school, increase by two, the bonus stacks with the bonus granted by Spell Focus. Power Word Stun, Clashing Rocks, Ooh, 20d6 if you get hit by it. An arcane apothos. At 20th level, your body surges with arcane power. All your concentration checks made to cast a spell or use a spell-like ability are automatically successful. Wow. It is a 20th level power. So we're going to go ahead and low and select normal because we want to be able to select the bloodline. Now, some of these bloodlines are probably the same. Arcane Bound, Arcane Bloodline Arcana. Well, no, apparently there is some minor differences. You don't get the bonus feats if you do it through here. But then you get the Arcane Bond, so. But let's start here with Abysmal. So you get uh, Arcana Knowledge. You can cast a spell of summoning sub-school. The creature summon gain DR good equal to half your sorcerer level. This does not stack with any DR the creature might have. And let's see. You get Cause Fear, Bull Strength, Rage, Stone Skin. Ooh, you get Stone Skin. So these spells are in addition to the number of spells given on new levels. Okay, so you basically you just learn the spell and can throw it as whatever level you are. So transformation gives plus four to strength, dexterity and con, plus four natural armor, plus five bonus on fortitude. And proficiency with all simple martial weapons. Your base attack bonus equals your character level, which may give you multiple attacks. Summon Monster 7. Whenever you add, cast Summoning, conjures more than one creature. Add one to the total creatures. Unholy Aura. Summon Monster 9 and Dynamic Might, which should actually be a 20th level ability, it says here. We've already seen Arcane Bloodline. It's pretty much the same, except that you don't get the bonus feats, but you do get the Arcane Bound and the Arcane Bloodline Arcana Magic Feet. Celestial. So 
So basically it's the same as the abysmal pretty much, except that uh, you get bless, resist, protection, remove, flame strike, <coughs> greater dispel, banishment, conviction, gives you plus, uh, that gives you spell resistance, sunburst, summon monster nine, and ascension. Excuse me, I have to tickle my throat. I have to take a drink there. Draconian Bloodline. Pretty much these are all, I think, about the same. Yeah, these are basically all the same except for what you get to breathe. So, with black, you get acid damage. Whenever you cast a spell with acid damage, you add one point of damage per die rolled. And you get additional class skill from Draconian Bloodline. So you get Perception. You get Mage Armor, Resist Energy, Dispel Magic, Fear, Spell Resistance, Dragonkind 1, So Dragonkind 1, you become a medium dragon, you gain plus 4 size, bonus to strength, plus 2 size bonus to con, plus 4 natural armor bonus, immunity to different difficult terrain, breath weapon, and resistance to one element. You also gain 1 bite, 2 claws, 2 wings. Your breath weapon and resistance depend on the type of dragon prototype. You can only use the breath weapon once per casting of this spell. All breath weapons deal 68 points of damage and allow a reflex save for half damage. Dragonfire 2, you're basically a bigger, meaner dragon with damage reduction. Your bites do, all your attacks do more, and you get a tail slap. And you can breathe your weapon twice per day, and does 88. Dragonkind 3, you get plus 10 strength, plus 8 size, plus 8 natural, blind side. 30, Breath Weapon, Damage Reduction 10 in Magic, Frightful Presence, Immunity to 1 Element. You also gain 2d8 Bite, 2 2d6 Claws, 2 1d8 Wings, and 1 2d6 Tail Slap. You can use your Breath Weapon as often as you like, but, not, but you must wait 1d4 rounds between uses. All Breath Weapons deal 12d8 Points of Damage. And allow a reflex save for half damage. And your breath goes to a 100 foot line and a 50 foot cone. At 19, you get overwhelming presence. They say anything that saves, lay, you know, lays at your feet and prostates itself so it's easy to kill. Ooh, and even if you recover early, you take 1d6 of Wisdom Drain and Staggered for a d4 rounds. If you make the initial save, you're only staggered for one round. 20th level, your Draconian Heritage becomes manifest. You gain immunity to par paralysis, sleep, and acid damage. You also gain blind sight 30 feet. So all the other dragons are basically the same, except what they breathe. This one's lightning, or electricity. This one's fire. This one's electricity. This one's acid. This one's fire. This one's acid. I know that one's fire. This one's actually cold, the silver, which is probably the white dragon is also cold. Okay, so that covers the dragons. So now we have the elemental bloodlines. So first of all is air. You get the normal proficiencies bonus. And your class spill, your class skill bonus is mobility. 
So you get burning hands electricity. So that's a new version of burning hands where it does electrical damage. Scorching ray that does electrical damage. Protection from energy. And here you're getting your bonus feats again. So you can get dodge, meta magic, empowered, great fortitude, improved initiative, lightning reflexes, power attack, skill focus, knowledge, arcania, and weapon finesse. Then you get elemental body at third level, every two level. Well, that's just a spell. When you cast a spell, you take on the form of a small air elemental or whatever, in this case, air. This one, you become a medium. This one, you become a large. This one, you become a huge. And you also gain elemental movement. You can become immune to grapple and tangle, slow and difficult terrain. You get summer monsters eight. You get Elemental Swarm. When the spell is complete, 2d4 large elementals, five level, five rounds later, 1d4 huge elementals appear. Five rounds after that, one greater elemental appears. The summon elementals appear when you where you designate and act immediately on your turn. They attack your opponents to the best of their ability. And then at 20th level, you get Elemental Form. You gain immunity to sneak attack, critical hits, and electrical damage. And all the other elements are the same except earth. You basically do acid. Fire, you of course do fire. And water, you do cold. So the next one is the Fey Bloodline. Where you basically get Arcana as your bonus skill. No, Arcana. Whenever you cast a spell of Compulsion Subschool, increase the spell's DC by 2. And then you get Nature Lore as your bonus class skill. So again, you don't get extra feats with this one. But you do get Woodland Stride. Basically, you, you can move for any sort of difficult grain at normal speed. You get Entangle for a spell. You get Hideous Laughter. Deep Slumber. Poison. Vine Trap. Dispel Magic Greater. Change Staff, where you can change your staff into an Ent. You get a Resistance to... Oh, you get a plus on caster levels to overcome a creature spell resistance. You get summon Nerad, summon Hemadryad, and Soul of the Fey. Very similar to the Sylvan. The Infernal Bloodline. So, Infernal, you get. Uh, da -da -da. Spell of Charm subschool increase by two. Knowledge World. Spell Protection from Good. Scorching Ray. Hold Person. Crushing Despair. Ming Fog. I assume it's supposed to be Mind Fog, not Ming Fog. Yeah, no, it's Ming Fog. No, it is Mind Fog. It says Ming Fog twice, but then it says Mind Fog, so. Hellfire Ray. Basically does 1d6 points of damage per caster level up to 15d6. Firebrand. Burns any creature it marks. When a fire clan burns, any creature it marks is immune to damage from any fire spell you cast. You mark several allies with a flaming rune. 
moon to for any you cast. Okay. That's useful. So basically you can throw this on, mark a bunch of people, and then you can fireball around you and not have to worry about it. What else was there? All the target's weapons inflict 1d6 points of fire damage on a hit. At any point during the spell's duration, a creature bearing a firebrand can launch a beam of fire at any target within 30 feet as a swift action. This ray requires a rage touch attack to hit and deals 1d6 points of damage. Once you use a fire brand to fire a ray in this way, the effects of the spell end for that creature. Powered stun. Polar midnight. You plunge an area into brutal chill of arctic night. All creatures in it take 5d6 points of damage and 1d6 points of dexterity per round. A successful fort save each round negates the dexterity damage but not the cold damage. Ooh, so they can't avoid the cold. 20th level, your form becomes infused with vile power. You gain immunity to fire and poison. You also gain resistance to acid and cold. Next is Serpentine Bloodline. Your powers of compulsion affect even bestial creatures. Whenever you cast a mind-affecting or language-dependent spell, it affects animals, magical beasts, monsters, humanoids, or vermin, as if they were humanoids who understood your language. And then stealth is your bonus class skill. So you get hypnotism, delay poison, summon monster three, poison, hold monster, transformation, Become a fighting machine, stronger, tougher, faster, and more skilled. Your mindset changes so you relish combat and you can't cast spells even from magic items. But you get plus four to strength, dexterity and con, plus four natural armor, plus five bonus to fortitude, proficiency all simple and martial weapons, and your attack bonus equals your level. Summon monster seven. Frightful Aspect. You become a larger, awful version of yourself. You gain the following. Plus 6 Size Bonus Strength. Plus 4 to Con. Plus 6 Natural Armor. DR 10 Magic. Spell Resistance equal to 10 plus half your caster level. You also emit an aura that em emanates 30 feet from you. Enemy creatures within the area are shaken. Each time a creature shaken by this aura hits you with a melee attack, the creature becomes frightened for 1d4 rounds. And that looks like it's supposed to be another spell. At 20th level, you gain the ability to turn yourself into a large spirit naga as beast shape 3 and back again at will. You also become immune to poison and paralysis. You may use serpent's fang as often as desired and you may choose to inflict damage to any ability score. And the undead one. This is the one I'm using in my Let's Play. So you get the undead, you get basically undead or susceptible to your mind affecting spells, corporal undead that were once humanoids or treated as humanoids for the purposes of determining which spells affect them. And your bonus is religion. You also get death's gift at third, you gain resist cold five and DR five magic. At ninth, you go to cold Resistance of 10 and DR of 10. So spells, you get third, you get cause fear. Fifth, you get false life. Seventh, you get vampiric touch. Nine, you get animate dead. Eleven, you get waves of fatigue. Thirteen, you get undeath to death. Will slay 1d4 worth of undead creatures per caster level. Doesn't do damage, just slays them outright. Finger of death. Instantly delivers 10 points of damage per caster level. If the target's fortitude save succeeds, at 10 takes 3d6 plus 1 per caster level. 
Hard wilting. So this one does 1d6 damage per caster level, max of 20d6. Particularly devastating to water elementals and plant creatures, who, who instead take 1d8 points of damage per caster level. Energy drain. You make a ranged touch attack to hit. If you hit, the subject gains 1d4 temporary negative levels. Negative levels stack. 24 hours after gaining them, the subject must make a fort save for each negative level if they save if the save succeeds that negative level is moved if it fails the negative level becomes permanent an undead creature struck by this way gains 10d4 temporary hit points for one hour and at 20 if you become one of us you gain immunity to cold paralysis and sleep you also gain dr5 but you already have DR10 at this point. So I'm not sure what I... Okay. You receive a plus four morale bonus on saving throws made against spells and spell-like abilities cast by undead. And that's basically all of them. So let's go ahead and... Let's pick something different than what I'm using in my playthrough. Ooh, let's be a red dragon. Okay, so... One at least a 16 there. In this one, we're going to make a pure caster, so we're going to go do that. And then that, that, and we'll put the elixir in strength. And arcana and perception, because you know I'm a big fan of perception. And then feats. We're not doing anything particular with this one. So actually, I should, let's do a different, slightly different. So, what is it? Do 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 do. Okay, so we want precise shot, which means we need to have point blank shot. So we may not have the stats for point blank shot. No, nope, we do. So point blank. Precise shot. And then we can use combat casting for our bonus. So this would basically you don't have the minus four so if you're going to do lots of ranged attacks and stuff like that that would be a good way to do it so this build you'd probably take besides your cantrips you would probably take range touch attacks and in fact let's go ahead and we take corrosive and mage armor boom and we just make them I like Madman Neutral. We'll call him Scorser. And that's basically what it looked like. So that's the quick overview of Sorcerer. So as always, if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and give me a like or a comment. And if you dislike the episode, leaving me a dislike is fine, but please leave a comment saying why you dislike the episode. As always, this is Spidey1958, and have fun gaming.